So in this video, we are going to go over, you probably guessed it, the Dai Mai. Now, the Dai Mai is one of the extraordinary vessels. It's probably more popularly known as the girdling vessel. Now, that word girdling comes from the word girdle, obviously, which basically is just like a strap that goes around your waist, kind of like a belt. And that's exactly what the girdling vessel really is. It's basically a horizontal belt or a horizontal vessel that goes around your waist, around your abdomen and around your back. And then so there's this connection then with the channels that go up and down your abdomen and the channels that go up and down your back. And because the dimite, it basically encircles your abdomen and encircles your back, goes all the way around your waist like a belt the daimai can basically either tighten or it can loosen itself around all of those channels. And then in terms of the daimai, it can actually also split your body. And this has to do with the energetic vortex. We've talked about this before. Basically, the daimai, it splits your body into an upper half and a lower half. And I'll put on the screen this picture of this energetic vortex. This picture basically represents all of the extraordinary vessels in your body and how together they pair up and they create this vortex, whether it's like a vortex that goes up and down and around or around the side or in and out. Now there's pairs that you can see there and basically the pairs divide your body into halves. And so for example, there's like the front half and the back half, which is the Ren Mai and the Du Mai, and they divide your body in front and back. We also have the Yin Chao. The Yin Chao, it divides the body into like a left and the right, and then we also have the Chong Mai. The Chong Mai is basically what creates like an inner core of your body. And of course, you have your outer shell as well. And then what we're talking about today is the Dai Mai. So the Dai Mai basically creates this above and below. So you can see from the picture, it's literally encircling this fear like a belt. And so it creates this upper half and a lower half. And now functionally, what these vortexes do is that they harmonize these two halves. So for example, the Dai Mai, it will harmonize the above and the below. The Ren Mai and the Du Mai, they harmonize front and back. All right, so now if we zoom in on the Dai Mai itself, we can look at the points that make up the Dai Mai. And so it starts at liver 13, and then it goes around your waist like a belt, and it crosses over gallbladder 26, 27, and 28. So really easy, liver 13, and then gallbladder 26 to 28. And so each extraordinary vessel has an opening point and a coupled point. Now, these two points together, they allow you to access the vessel and it allows you to regulate the vessel as well. So the opening point for the Daimai is gallbladder 41 and the coupled point for the Daimai is Sanjiao 5. So the question is what happens when you access the Daimai? Well, there are clinical applications for the usage of the Daimai and that's what this video is about. So here, I'm going to put up on the screen just a list of all the clinical applications. So as you can see, number one, you can harmonize the liver and gallbladder with the daimai. And this clinical application makes complete sense because when you look at the points on the daimai that we just went over, they're made up of liver 13 and three gallbladder points. So if there's an excess condition in the gallbladder, for example, or even the liver, like for example, let's say you have unilateral headaches, like a very gallbladder heat type issue, which your patient might say, my temporal, my temples hurt. I have temporal headaches. These are headaches on the side of your head. You can use the daimai to regulate the gallbladder channel. You can use the daimai to regulate and harmonize the liver gallbladder relationship and therefore treat the temporal headache. All you simply have to do is activate the opening and coupled point, which is gallbladder 41 and Sanjiao 5. Clinical application number two is that the Daimai can resolve dampness in the lower jaw. Now, this has to do with the channel's ability to loosen or tighten around the channels of the abdomen and back, which just means that the Daimai can either allow more flow up and down or it can restrain flow up and down. Now, what does that have to do with dampness? Dampness, we already know. Dampness is three things. Dampness is dirtiness, it's heaviness, and it's stickiness. Now, in terms of heaviness, heaviness, we know that it likes to 
go down. It likes to settle down. Some sources will say that it likes to infuse down. Now, this can be treated also by the Dai Mai because the Dai Mai, it regulates this flow from up and down. So it can regulate Qi from up and down. It can regulate flow going to and from the bottom half of the body. And so that's how it can regulate dampness and resolve dampness in the lower jiao or in the legs. All right, so next up we have clinical application number three, which is basically that the Dai Mai can regulate the circulation of qi that's going to and from the legs. This again has to do with that tightening and that loosening because the Dai Mai is like a belt. So it's going to loosen or tighten around the channels in the abdomen and in the back. And so by tightening or loosening, the Dai Mai can actually regulate that circulation of qi that's going to your legs. So if your patient is coming to you and saying, my legs feel weak, my legs feel numb, my legs feel cold, you should consider using the Dai Mai to regulate that circulation that's going to their legs. All right, now clinical application number four is that the Dai Mai can affect the chi of the stomach channel, especially in the legs. Now to understand this, we have to do some light reading, which I don't have memorized, so I'm gonna take out my phone and I'm gonna read it to you. So basically from Simple Questions chapter 44, it says that the Chong Mai is the C of the 12 channels and it connects with the bright yang, the yang ming, which we know that has to do with the stomach channel. It connects with the yang ming in the ancestral vessels. And they are all, meaning everything that we just talked about, the chong mai, the bright yang, the ancestral vessel, uh, the ancestral muscles, they are all restrained by the dai mai. So when the bright yang is empty, the ancestral muscles become slack as the dai mai fails to tighten them. The leg muscles can become weak and atrophied. And so what does all of that mean? So what that means is basically that there's this connection between our chong mai, our stomach channel, and our dai mai. And to understand that, we have to look at our point location book because when we look at chong mai, we see that one of the branches there includes a point called stomach 30. And stomach 30 is the beginning of one of the branches that actually goes down to the foot. So I'll make a picture and I'll put it on the screen for you so you see what I'm talking about. But basically there's this connection between the Dai Mai and the Chong Mai by way of stomach 30. So according to Simple Questions, it's telling us that there's this connection between our Chong Mai and our stomach channel and also the Dai Mai. And that's through stomach 30. All right, so now next up, we have clinical application number five, number six, and number seven, which number five is abdominal pain, number six is gynecology, and number seven is the hips. So now let's go into each one. So first one, we have abdominal pain. So in terms of the Dai Mai, if your patient has abdominal pain and they say that it's radiating to the front or it's radiating to the back or basically that it's moving from the front to the back, basically along the pathway of the Dai Mai channel, you can use the Dai Mai to treat that abdominal pain. And this is because the Dai Mai itself is a horizontal vessel. So it can treat pain that's radiating to the front and radiating to the back. Now, the next clinical application is gynecology. Now, the Dai Mai, it does have a huge influence on gynecological issues, like, for example, leucorrhea. Now, leucorrhea, what is that? Leucorrhea is basically when there's this discharge coming from the vagina. Now, this can be normal or it could be abnormal. It all depends on the color of that discharge. Basically, if it's normal, it's white. And if it's odorless, it's normal as well. But if it's yellow, if it's green, if it's smelling bad, so that color change or that odor change, it could be a sign that there's something pathological brewing. So then how does the Dai Mai fit into all of this? So this basically goes back to the mechanism of the loosening and tightening of the Dai Mai. So if your patient, for example, presents with excess leucorrhea, they have a lot of discharge. So we can use the Dai Mai with that tightening and that loosening to tighten the flow and reduce the amount of excess discharge. On the other hand, if Dai Mai is diseased and it's too loose, it can also cause the body to produce excess discharge because the Dai Mai being loose is going to allow things to flow excessively. So now pregnancy is also something that's affected by the Dai Mai. Because the Dai Mai is one of the major contributors actually to the health of a growing fetus. Now, the Ren Mai obviously also has a lot of contributing factors. The kidney also has a lot of contributing factors and also, I mean, a lot of things, chi, blood, everything. Now, this episode is talking about the Dai Mai. So let's talk about how the Dai Mai contributes to the health of the fetus. And basically, it goes back to how the Dai Mai is like a belt or like a girdle. 
And so what a belt and girdle does is that it supports, it keeps things up, it keeps things stabilized. So it's going to keep the fetus up, it's going to keep the fetus stabilized, it's going to support the fetus. If the daimai is unfortunately too loose, then what happened is that chi could not be intact or chi may not be holding up the fetus and that can affect the fetus negatively and be a potential cause for miscarriage. All right, so now clinical application number seven has to do with the hips. Now, this one's a very simple one, and it's basically just the location of the points of the daimai. Now, you can see daimai sits where? It sits along the abdomen, along the back. It also goes specifically by gallbladder 27 and 28, which is very near your ASIS. And so if there's hip pain, if there's back pain, if there's lower abdominal pain, these are all related to the horizontal pathway of the daimai. All right, and now the last clinical application has to do with whether there's a fullness in the daimai or if there's emptiness in the daimai. And so for that, I'll put on the screen two lists that we're going to talk about, which is a full condition in the daimai and an empty condition in the daimai. So first, let's talk about the full condition, which a full condition is basically when the daimai is diseased in that it's too tight. So that tightness is a restraining type. So that means it's classified as a full condition. And so this is when your patient's going to tell you, I feel fullness in my abdomen. I feel like my back is sitting in water. They could also say that they have this backache that radiates from their lower abdomen to their front or vice versa. They might even say, and you will see this on the board exam, that they have this feeling of heaviness in the body and coldness in the back as if they're sitting in water. Or the board exam loves to reference this one, which is heaviness in the abdomen as if they're carrying 5,000 coins. So that's a very specific manifestation that has directly to do with the daimai. Now, all that has to do with the daimai being too tight, in other words, a full condition. Now, the other half of all of this is the empty half, which is the empty condition. So this is when the daimai is too slack. So it's too loose. So what happens then is that your patient has a higher chance of having hernias, miscarriages, and even prolapses. All right, so I hope you liked that episode. I'm trying to change up the format of the episodes to make them a little more creative, to try to scratch my creative itch. So I hope you've been enjoying that part of it. Right now, I'm still creating that course and thank you to everyone who's an insider who's providing amazing feedback. So this course is really turning out to be exactly what an acupuncture student needs to help them get all the information they need, have all the resources they need, all the confidence that they need to pass the board exam. If you want to be an insider, make sure you go to my website, www.studyaccuwithme.com forward slash insiders, and you can sign up for the chance to be one as well. All right, everyone. Hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, God bless and happy studying.